Hi everyone, today I'm here with my March wrap up. I read five books in the month of March. I started a couple more but I didn't manage to finish them unfortunately so I'm just obviously going to talk about the books that I have finished. The first book that I finished is Cat Poems by different authors. Um, this is only a tiny little book. I'm not normally into poetry so there's no surprise that I didn't particularly enjoy this book because I didn't expect to love it anyway although the fact that it has something to do with cats or rather a lot to do with cats I'm even wearing a freaking cat t-shirt <laughs> um, I thought I was gonna enjoy it a little bit more than I did I thought it was just like average I didn't get some of it because it's poetry I like I said I'm not a huge fan of poetry I don't really understand it very well I do sometimes enjoy some poetry or at least I have enjoyed it in the past but that one was more like lyrical beautiful words poetry this one was just about cats obviously so I thought I'd connect more I thought I'd like it more but I didn't so I thought there wasn't anything special about this book although I do love cats and I feel like I should have enjoyed this book I feel kind of bad for not enjoying it as much as I should have or could have but anyway there were some cute poems there were they were not bad but I just feel like poetry just goes past past me in general so I'm not the biggest fan of this book unfortunately but I still read it and I guess enjoyed it in a way. The second book I finished in the month of March was Before the Coffee Gets Cold, Tales from the Cafe by Toshi Kazu Kawaguchi. This one is a sequel to Before the Coffee Gets Cold, which is actually right here. So yeah, um, in this one and in the first one we are in Japan in a little cafe in which you can travel back in time. There are certain rules and one of them is you must return before the coffee gets cold. So the both of the books are really atmospheric, properly. I feel like um, whenever I was reading them I didn't feel like I was in the present, it felt like I was in the cafe experiencing it all. It just felt kind of cosy and detached from the world so I felt like that was pure escapism which I really enjoyed this book for that. But also the characters that we meet in this book, the stories, why they go back to the past. Some of them are so heartbreaking. I cried a few times, especially in the first book, a couple of times, more than a couple of times to be honest. And I feel like for such tiny books, these ones just have such strong, I don't even know what it is, just strong something that makes you feel everything. I feel like they're so good at describing feelings, at creating an atmosphere of whatever emotion the main character is experiencing, why they're going back to the past. I felt like it was so, I don't know, it's amazingly done and I literally couldn't find any flaw about this book whatsoever or the first one. They're both really good. I really enjoy them, I think, equally. Um, in this one though, we got to know more about the main characters that we've met in the first book which was really nice so we kind of got a bit of a background story from the characters that we meet in the very first book they are kind of like main characters who actually work in the cafe or people close to them so that was really nice get like a slight background of slice of their life in a way why they're there what exactly their life story is what's what's going on in them with them so yeah I really really enjoy this book they're one of my favorite books I think Before the Coffee Gets Cold was one of my favorite books of 2020 so I think this one is going to be one of my favorite books of 2021 because I really really enjoyed it that much and I feel like for like I said for such a small book it left such a huge impact on me to the point that every time I think about these books it just kind of brings me back to that atmosphere the cozy sort of steady almost like out of this world atmosphere which is amazing sometimes heartbreaking sometimes heartwarming in a way it's just a mixture of different feelings i think for these books so i really really love them the third book that i finished in the month of march is attached by dr amir levine and rachel heller this one is a non-fiction psychology kind of book 
This one is about kind of relationships. So we've got four different attachment styles in general. They form from throughout our childhood and then we kind of use them in our adult relationships with different people. But mostly it talks about relationships. So there's avoidant attachment style, secure and anxious. So there are three attachment styles. It was really interesting to learn about it and now having read this book I see it every time literally in every person what kind of attachment style they've got and how it affects their life and in general. So it's supposed to help you with your relationship or if you're trying to find a relationship with anybody or just learn psychology in general. I found this book really interesting and fascinating. That's why I've got so many tabs in this book because I might look back on it and use some of the information in my life. And in general, I personally really like psychology. So these kind of books, I really enjoy them and I always get something out of them. So this one was a really, really good one and it wasn't boring at all. It was definitely very accessible to everyone, even if you don't know anything about psychology, this one is very accessible, literally easy to read. I definitely didn't take, it didn't take me a long time to read it at all. They don't use a lot of scientific terms. Everything's explained really well and I feel like it's just a good book on this topic. So. The next book that I read is A Curse of Dark and Lonely by Bridget Cameron, which is the first book in a trilogy. I even did a kind of non-review <laughs> review on this book. It will be in the description down below for you to check out if you're interested. But this one is a modern Beauty and the Beast retelling in which we follow our main character, Harper, who is just a normal girl. She's got her normal life living in DC, Washington. And then one day she sees a girl in trouble, so she goes to save her, but instead she's whisked away to this different realm in which there's Prince Ren, whose, cur who, whose kingdom is under a curse. Which is kind of like your obviously typical Beauty and the Beast twist. I've really enjoyed this book. I didn't expect I would enjoy it that much to the point that before I even finished it, I thought, right, I need the second and third books straight away because I was so curious about how it was gonna go. I was really interested in the characters. The characters, Harper, the main character, was amazing. She was really strong. She knew what she wanted. And there's no insta-love in this book. I mean, not that Beauty and the Beast, re Beast really is a about insta-love. But anyway, um, I feel like this book wasn't very romance heavy. I thought it was like a slow burn. I was still not quite sure where it's actually going, so there's a bit of that. I also liked a side character, Grey. He, he's intriguing. There's something going on with him, I feel like, and I think we're going to find out more in the second book from how the first one finished, so I'm really looking forward to reading the second book, which I'm going to be reading in April. So yeah, really, really enjoyed this book. This was a pleasant surprise and I'm gutted that I waited about two years to start reading this book. So yeah, but now I finally read it and really loved it. And the very last book that I managed to finish is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. This one was for the book club, or just one more page. Again, the link will be down below. I love that book club. I love Jess who runs this book club. I love her videos. So cozy, so lovely. Her channel will be down below as well for you to check her out if you're interested, but you should. <laughs> so this one was, um, I guess you can call it historical fiction because it's mainly set in 1969. There's two dual timeline. I feel like this book is a combination of historical fiction, coming of age story, as well as a murder mystery. Because we've got this uh, guy, Chase, who's been murdered and the Marsh girl is being accused of murdering him. But she's not quite what she seems because she's so intelligent, she's shy, she's quiet, she's always lived on a marsh just by herself. So everything she's learned in life, she's learned by herself, through books, through nature. So I really, really love this book. I was <laughs> pleasantly surprised with it. Again, I filmed a review on this one, kind of a review, non-review <laughs> review. Again, the link will be down below. Um, this one was so, so atmospheric. 
I love the main character, Kia, Kaya, I don't know how to pronounce her name. But she was lovely and like I said, it is a coming of age story so we follow her story from her childhood. We are seeing what she's going through, how it's forming her to become a person that she is now and I really like her as a character. She's a strong character and for what she's been through, she's amazing. And also descriptions of nature are absolutely beautiful. And like I said, the atmosphere is very, very much there. I really enjoy the atmosphere. I really enjoyed another character. He's like a side character in this book, Tate. He's amazing. I think he's definitely one of my favorite characters that I've read this year so far, or in general even. He was great. And in general, this book, I think it's one of those books that you can call cozy because it, I think, again, it's pure escapism in the, with this one because I felt like I was being transported every time I was reading it. I just stopped thinking about anything else that was happening in my life. I just kept concentrating on this book. Even though if there was nothing happening at all, like the plot wasn't going anywhere, the descriptions, the characters, it was all there and it was so amazing. I really, really love this book. Even like the last part of the book when it becomes just a murder trial, she's being, um, when she's being accused, we go to a trial with her. We experience all that. It's like an official structure and everything, but it feels like Towards the very end, we didn't really know who actually murdered the guy, if he was even murdered in the first place. So the author kept throwing all of those clues or not clues until the very, very last page when we finally got our answer. Some of the things were still not quite answered, but it kind of left intrigue, I guess, in a way. I personally really, really enjoy this book and I feel like it was brilliant. I literally can't think of anything um, about this book that I didn't like. The characters, the atmosphere, the plot. Not a single page of this book was boring. So yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed it. And all of these tabs again, I think are the quotes that I liked or some other bits that I've really particularly liked about this book. So, I definitely see myself rereading this book at some point in the future, maybe not anytime soon, but I think it's going to be one of my favourite books of this year for sure, and maybe, maybe it will even join the list of my favourite books of all time, who knows? But yeah, if you want to hear any more thoughts, my thoughts on this book, you will have to check the um, actual video in which I'm talking about this book. But yeah, those are all of the books that I managed to finish in the month of April. I'm not going to be talking about the books that I started because there were a few that I started way back and I literally kind of um, slightly got out of hand to be honest. That is it for this video. If you've read any of the books that I've mentioned, please let me know what you thought of them. I'd love to know. But apart from that, um, that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye!